So in this video, what I'm going to cover is what causes the fear of powerlessness, the three signs that we're experiencing the fear, the fear of powerlessness, and then the solutions to get you through it. Now, what is the fear of powerlessness? Where does it come from? Well, it comes from attachment. See, we are the only species on this planet where we must physically and emotionally attach to another human being or we will die. Our survival depends on it. Well, there are tremendous many moments in childhood where our sense of self, what I call our authenticity, is challenged. In other words, our parents impart their views on us or they're perfectly imperfect and we get hurt in certain moments. Well, we're powerless to defend ourselves. And that's where we learn the fear of powerlessness for the first times. You know, sometimes as a child crying or, um, you know, we were hungry and didn't get fed, but we, we could never stand up and advocate for ourselves because we're just a child. And in those moments, we felt powerless. That's where we learned this. So what's happening to us in the present moment is, as, as I talked about before, it's tying back to that original fear. If you're experiencing that stress or fear in this moment, you're actually reliving a moment from your past that's never been reconciled, where you felt powerless as a child. So what are the three signs that we are experiencing the fear of powerlessness? Well, the first one is that we are focused. All we're focusing on is what we can't control and not what we can control. So this looks like, say you're having money troubles and you spend all day long worrying about how am I gonna pay this bill? How am I gonna pay that bill? Oh my God, oh my God, I'm gonna go broke. I'm gonna be on the street. And so you're stuck in all the powerlessness and all the victim side of the problem. You're basically stuck reliving the problem. Just like as a child, you had no recourse to feed yourself, defend yourself, anything. And so you're in that childlike state. <clears throat> so that's the first sign. I'll give you the solution to that in a minute. The second sign is that we're giving ourselves away. We're going against our own morals and values, needs and wants, negotiables and non-negotiables. I'm going to give you a story from a client of mine. Just this week, he came in and he had a business idea. He's a mortgage guy and gives out gifts. And he had talked to somebody who, you know, had these designer knives. And he thought, wow, that's kind of a neat gift. Well... The salesperson happened to be a woman and he was telling me the story of how she just kept pressuring him to buy. And he was like, he started to get afraid and he started to back off. And I'm already, because I know his history, I already know what's going on. I let him keep going. And he thinks, you know, as he's telling the story, he's talking about how she's the problem. And then he's like, you know, I have to talk to my wife and all of this. So he goes to his wife and asks her, you know, says, hey, there's an idea I have. What do you think? And she goes, no. And I said, so what'd you do? And he goes, oh, I didn't do it. And I said, did you see what just happened? You see, his whole childhood, his mother controlled everything, every thought, every feeling, every action he ever took. Well, he just was in a position with two women and he gave away his own morals and values. It was his moral and value that this would be a great gift. It was his need and want to share that gift with his clients. It went along with his, it was negotiable to him. It, it was the right thing to do. It wasn't non-negotiable, but he gave it all away to please the women in his life. What he didn't realize is he was acting just like he did as a child. He gave these women, he gave himself away and gave the power to these women just like he did in childhood. He was stuck repeating his fear of powerlessness, okay? Now, the final way that this shows up is the inability to say no. And most people can't say no to others because they think it's rude. They think it's mean. It's selfish. Um, that all we're ever supposed to do is do things for other people. Well, as I'm going to show you, that's, that's very untrue. So what are the solutions to overcome the fear of powerlessness? Well, the first thing is to make a list, two lists. On one piece of paper, put what I can't control. And on the next piece, put what I can control. So what I can't control are people, places, and things. Their thoughts, their feelings, their actions, their choices, how the world works, you know, other all that stuff. I can't control any of that. But what I can control are my thoughts, feelings, and actions. It is my personal life, in my career, everything I do. 
I am responsible for those. So when we get stuck on the victim side of I, I'm powerless and oh my God, I'm gonna go broke, the switch becomes, wait a minute, how can I make money? What are my options? What can I control? Well, I could reach out to previous clients, check in and see how they're doing. Maybe there's a client. I mean, I've done that all the time where my client load gets low and I just reach out and I go, hey, to past clients, I go, hey, how are things going? Are you doing okay? Can I help you in any way? And boom, they go, oh my God, my husband and I just got in a fight. Can we come see you? I focused on what I can control, not what I can't control. That's the solution. So when you're over here, you have a list on that ends the powerlessness and makes you adult and puts you in control and in power of your life again. Now, the second solution is what are my morals and values, my needs and wants, my negotiables and non-negotiables. Now, the way this works is we go through every area of our life, friendships, relationships, my career, my hobbies as a parent, my uh, spirituality, every aspect of our life. And we go, what's my moral and value here? Like relationships. Do you believe in monogamy? Do you believe that you're supposed to live together before you get married? Is it sex before marriage, after marriage? Is it once a week? Is it once a year? What are your morals and values? What do you believe? See, most people don't know what they are and they just, because they're reliving their parents' morals and values, just like my client. He relived his mom's. He couldn't make decisions. He didn't realize he wasn't operating as an adult in his own morals and values in his life, okay? So that's the second um, solution. Now, the third is learning to say no. And this can be very difficult for most people. So I'm gonna give you the criteria on when to say no. <clears throat> Think about it. Most relationships, whether they're business or personal, end and everybody goes, I did this for them and this for them and this for them and they never gave me this. So what does that tell you? They did all of those things in the hopes that they'd get this in return. That means, unbeknownst to them, they were trying to manipulate out getting this in return. Well, that's not free. That's, that's doing something for somebody else that isn't kind or loving because we're gonna make them pay for it. So before you ever say yes to anyone or anything, you ask yourself these three questions. One, am I gonna keep score that I've been doing things for them? Two, will I ever throw it in their face? And three, will this ever lead to resentment? If you think any of those things will happen, then you need to say no, because otherwise you're gonna throw it back in their face and you're gonna realize, wow, I gave my power away. I was just saying yes to this because I wanted this in return. Ooh, that's not good, okay? Now, for many people, they don't know how to say no, so I'm gonna give you the magic phrase. Whenever you wanna say no, instead of it, just say, you know, that just doesn't work for me. Do you hear that? See, they can't argue with that. Well, what do you mean it doesn't work for you? Well, it just doesn't work for me. So what part of it doesn't work for you? Well, it just doesn't work for me. See, you don't have to explain yourself. You're no longer a child. You don't have to defend why something, why you don't wanna do something. It just doesn't work for you. And you see how that takes total ownership, total power of I'm empowering myself. So there's your solutions to the fear of powerlessness.